Spent a lot of time over the last couple of days talking about the technical issues around cloud computing, uh, some of the scaling issues, some of the open versus closed issues. One of the things we haven't spent a lot of time talking about is the legal constraints around it. Uh, the Cloud Connect event tends to focus um, on the enterprise cloud adoption. Um, and in many cases, enterprises are not going to adopt something unless there's a well-understood legal and regulatory framework. Today, that framework looks more like a patchwork quilt. And uh, our next speaker, Robert Holliman uh, from the BSA, is going to spend some time talking about the balkanization of cloud uh, legislation, cloud standards, and what we can do to address that. Robert. Good morning. I've got good news and I've got bad news. And you all know the good news, which is the cloud is growing fast. The bad news is that if we don't watch out, governments might chop up the global cloud into little pieces. Now, I've been in this industry for 20 years and I've seen this movie before. Sometimes lawmakers and regulators seem like they just can't help themselves. They adapt bad policies that harm the potential of great technologies. And with the cloud, our biggest risk is they may make it difficult for data to flow across international borders. And in some countries, they are already doing things that could tilt the playing field and prevent fair competition. Today, I'm going to show you what we're up against. I'm going to give you a preview of a new report that the BSA will release next week. What this report does is it benchmarks laws and regulations in 24 countries that represent 80% of the global ICT market. Now, the study paints a pretty dawning picture but it also points you to where the best business opportunities are in the short, the medium, and the long term. Before I get into the details of that study, however, let me give you a sobering thought. Imagine a cloud where data has to move across borders the way that people do. Long lines, bottlenecks, backups, Politically, that's exactly what we're up against. Technologically, it would be like having a series of walls and fences around the world. They would slow down the kind of trade and digital services that should otherwise boom in the cloud era. This is the global economy, after all. Why shouldn't you get access to the technology you run to run your business from anywhere in the world in a cloud environment? If the best solution comes from Argentina or Poland, so be it. And it goes without saying that why shouldn't your customers be everywhere in the world? But all of this assumes the right regulations are in place. We can't have trade preferences or regulations that distort the market. Otherwise, it would make the architecture of the cloud into kind of a Rube Goldberg machine. Now, this is what the real world looks like now. It's a patchwork. Countries like Japan and Australia, shown in green, have good policies for the cloud. We've analyzed them in categories like security and privacy and cybercrime and trade. They all get mar good marks. Other countries like Brazil and China, shown in red and orange, they have a lot of catching up to do. And what you see is a sharp divide between advanced economies and the developing world. Now, that's not surprising. But what is surprising is what you see when you look at countries that are doing well, and there you find that there are efforts by countries to wall themselves in with conflicting laws and regulations. 
Let's start with the European Union. Countries like the UK, Germany, France, they're logical markets for US-based cloud firms. Indeed, all the EU countries are off to a good start. But lawmakers in the EU are putting their thumb on the scales. They're doing things with regulations to keep non-European cloud firms waiting at the border so that local firms can catch up. For example, they say they have concerns about America's privacy laws, about America's Patriot Act, but it's a red herring. The truth is they see the cloud as an opportunity to reshape the technology market in their favor. Now, if one country stands out as the right model, it's Japan. Indeed, it's a mature, tech-friendly market. And Japan, of course, is an island country, and they know how important it is to be connected to the world. Japan's laws promote the cloud. They balance privacy and security concerns with those around innovation and growth. Japan has strong intellectual property laws that protect your business interest. It has a great IT infrastructure so you can grow your business quickly. For cloud computing to reach its full potential, we need more countries to take that approach. In the short term, you can look at our scorecard as a roadmap to the best current market opportunities. Think about the policy landscape in the context of market size, and here's what the world looks like now. The chart shows the best policies on the right side of the scale and the biggest markets on the high side. The places in the top right are all great bets. They're Japan, the UK, and the US, which on this graph would be off the charts in terms of market size. They're all very good markets with good policies. At the bottom right, you'll see a group of markets that are smaller markets but they also have good policies. Places like Canada, Australia, Korea. Over the long term, however, we have to fight hard to get countries that are behind the curve on cloud policy up to the rest of the world and to a higher standard. Otherwise, they themselves will become a drag on the global cloud economy. Those countries on the left side of the chart are especially important when you consider how fast some of them are growing. Watch what's going to happen to China, Brazil, and India in just the next few years on the left side of this chart. They are definitely on the move in market size. All of them are becoming powers in the digital economy, and everyone in this room expects that to continue. But what's not clear is whether their cloud markets will be open to you. Think about China's great firewall. Think about China's requirement to have a partner with a local joint venture. We all know that the cloud doesn't scale behind a series of walls. So how do we create a level playing field for the cloud era? Let me propose that we need three main things. Number one, we need more consistent privacy and security policies. We don't need everyone's laws to be identical, but they have to promote good data stewardship while also encouraging international commerce. Second, governments buy a lot of technology, and we need governments to throw their weight around in a constructive way. They can shape a marketplace if they let the best technologies win. And third, we need to promote innovation in the cloud the same way we promote innovation everywhere else. That means protecting your rights as you create new products for the market. It means stopping new forms of cybercrime and theft. Getting all this done, and getting it done right, will take a lot of work. But I'm incredibly optimistic, and I'm determined to work with you to break down every barrier to a truly global cloud. In Washington, D.C., there's an old adage. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. 
So too it is, unfortunately, in the cloud economy. If we don't make ourselves heard, then the cloud will get stuck in that proverbial long customs line that I showed you a few minutes ago. Lawmakers need the technology community to point them in the right direction. So please, watch for our report that will be released next Tuesday, the 22nd. It can be found at BSA's website, bsa.org. Share those detailed findings with your friends and colleagues, and let's make sure everyone knows what's at stake. Thank you very much.